Hi everyone, my name is Hyacinth, um, and I've been agonizing for so long about starting to share my collection and like get to know other people who also have the same hoarding hobby. Um, and so I've been agonizing about making this video and I finally just told myself, just do it. And who cares if it's like great and a masterpiece <laughs> like these pieces, but at least to me, they're masterpieces. Um, so here we go. Um, I just chose five pieces from my collection and I figured that I would share them. So let me move them out of the way and we will start the last one I leave. Um, so this is a sterling silver hair clip, a claw clip. Um, you can put it in your hair. Um, obviously you can't see my hair right now, so we aren't doing that. Um, so this is a sterling silver claw clip. I got it as a gift for my partner. Um, I had seen some, I think it's by a designer. Her name's Pat Arias. She makes like modern concho belts or contemporary concho belts, um, and a variety of other goods in sterling and leather. Um, and so my partner surprised me with this as a gift. Um, it is marked 925 in 2015. Um, I've tried to find out what brand this is, but I just can't for the life of me remember. I've tried like good alt, good old, good old, good old Hollywood, so many different things. And I don't think I've ever found what it is. Um, Oh, and it says die clip plus there. Um, but it is sterling. I have tested um, the heck out of this <laughs> and it comes back. Um, it's a little uncomfortable to wear. It's nearly an ounce of silver um, and I have a little bit too much hair for it to grab onto. Um, so I wear it as like on the collar of a shirt or on the placket, uh, the button placket of a shirt. Um, and so I still get to enjoy it, even though it's a little impractical to wear in my hair because this silver is so, it's a very thick gauge. Um, I love the cut work. I love that the light passes through it. I guess it's not cut work because this is such a heavy gauge. Um, it's probably die stamped. There we go. <laughs> well, that's it for this, um, unknown brand of sterling silver hair clip. Here I have another, this was something that really got me into folk jewelry um, or ethnic jewelry. Some people like ethnic, but I prefer folk. Um, but these are a pair of Himachal Pradesh earrings. Um, they were probably made in the 1950s. Um, they're in good silver, um, but I think they're so gorgeous. Uh, this granulation work, the um, I'm not sure if you'd call this canateel work, um, but this is coiled silver. So it's a small bit of silver wire that has had another bit of silver wire wrapped around it. And then that sort of assemblage has been um, attached to the earring. There's a solder seam up there. And then there's this granulation. We have this loop and loop chain with these little danglies. And some days when I wear um, necklaces, uh, these are so long, they're like four or five centimeters long. Um, they will brush up against my necklace and make a really nice sound. Um, so I really like them. This is also something that I really like and I like to talk about because I got a great deal on it. Um, I don't think the person who sold it to me knew that it was silver. There is a super, super small Tunisian Moore's head. 80% um, standard mark there. Um, and the chain is marked several times. Um, but when it arrived to me, it was terribly tarnished. Um, I've given it a light polishing now, but you can see there's some tarnish on it. Um, so this Hamsa, it's a Hamsa and a Rihanna chain. Um, this is a Hamsa, uh, which is the hand of Fatima, but it's a much older Punic symbol um, that's a lot of people, um, especially like Judeo-Abrahamic religions have incorporated. Um, but this is a sand cast Hamsa. So someone like drew a picture in some sand and then cast 
silver into that pictogram or, or I don't know the proper word for a hole in the sand, um, but they cast the silver into this. And so I'll show in, a made, in another video maybe um, that there's a small granule of sand uh, that's still caught and I can't free it. I've tried so hard. <laughs> Um, but this, again, is called a Rihanna chain. Um, I think Rihanna in Arabic means something like myrtle or basil. Um, and so my thought was that maybe this evokes uh, the image of the myrtle tree in flower or because I don't really see basil leaves. Um, but I love it. This catches the light so well. Um, I, it almost feels like too flashy. I mean, I wear a lot of jewelry, but this feels super flashy. I just love it. I love the sound that it makes. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Tunisian silver um, Hamsa and Rihanna chain. Um, and so this, the biggest, um, this is a 1907 made in Birmingham or Birmingham comment if I'm wrong um, in pronouncing that and uh, actually you can't really see the maker's mark here but I'm pretty sure that this was made by Boots Drug uh, which is like I think they're like a big chain in the UK um, but this is a uh, silver and tortoise shell uh, hugs or boar bristle brush. Um, I use this whenever I like am brushing my hair. I love it around my scalp. Um, so I bought this from a guy in the UK um, off of eBay. And this was so dehydrated and so battered when I received it that you couldn't tell that it was tortoise shell. And when I finally realized that it was in, that it was tortoise shell, I mean, I was just shocked because I thought that this stuff was like, illegal to buy and sell. Um, I did not buy it with knowing that it was tortoise shell. I thought that this was just black wood um, with this nice, I believe it's called pique work. Um, so 1907, that's like, I guess, Art Nouveau, the end of Art Nouveau. Um, I think this bow sort of points that points to that. Um, and But it's, I guess if you class things by who the British monarch at the time was, it's Edwardian. Um, so I, d I don't know too much about those things, and so I, I won't speak about it. But I love it. Um, it is very thin silver plate, but it's filled with a sort of cement or a plaster to give it weight. Um, if this was made out of solid silver, it would be much, much heavier. Um, but the bristles are still in great shape. I do want to have um, a new head put in one day, um, but it's a little pricey for me right now. Um, I love the tortoise shell. It's such an amazing treat. I, I could never rationalize buying it intentionally, um, purely because of the terrible, you know, stealing animal shells um, and killing them in the process. But the fact that this is over 100 year old tortoise shell and that it somehow made it through UK and US customs um, and made it to me. And I discovered it just by, I think I had brushed my hair with it after giving it a good clean. And I noticed this, this uh, sort of caramel color. And yeah, I, I gave it a good coat of oil and wax. Um, and yeah, absolutely one of my favorite objects. Um, and I, I still use it. My lights just went off. <laughs> um, and so my final object for today, uh, the show and tell, I guess, um, is this. This is like my everyday necklace. I had to take it off to put it in this video. Um, but it's just a, a sterling silver Italian uh, snake chain. Um, and I have charms. Um, that I've hung from it. Well, three beads and four charms, or three charms and a locket. Um, so I guess we'll just work le left to right. Um, these three beads are Yemeni beads. They're good silver, which is somewhat rare. Sometimes you'll find them in brass. Um, but 
these are good silver and it, this kind of granulation work is got, what got me into folk jewelry. Um, just the way that it looks. These are called, I don't know if I said, but Yemeni uh, mulberry beads. Um, you know, really big in the jewelry of, of, of Yemen and really across the Arab world and even into India. Um, and so I have four charms or three charms in a locket. This one is a Czech glass um, bead. It's sort of football shaped. It has a perforation up here at the top, um, but this is Czech crystal. Um, so I don't, I don't think that it has lead in it. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but I've just got it suspended with a bit of bead wire and a crimp bead. Um, but these are called Hilari charms or Hilari pendants. Um, and so my goal is to have an entire necklace of nothing but these beads. Um, but these are very costly. <laughs> so we'll see when that happens. Um, and then this one, you know, separated by a mini mulberry bead. This is a six-fold, maybe 1930s, 1940s uh, sterling silver locket of mine. It's got a great uh, sponsor mark or maker's mark. Um, and there's also a purity mark there too. Um, but it's a six-fold locket. I don't use it as a locket. Um, and I've seen a lot of these, but I've never seen one with this sort of helical or infinity sign lock um, or clasp. Um, and so I've always really liked it because I haven't seen another one that looks quite like it. Um, yeah, and it sort of reminds me of, I never read Harry Potter, but, um, what do you call it? The snitch? The, <laughs> I don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, <laughs> but there is that, and it's one of my favorite charms. It was one of my first, like, jewelry purchases for myself, um, which has led me to where I am at now. <laughs> Um, this one is another, I love this thing. I have loved it since the moment I got it. I will, um, hopefully I can link the, the, the woman who sold this to me. Um, she owns a store called Bead Paradise. Um, I think her first name is Ruth. Um, but this, I don't know if there is a Indian name for it, um, or, you know, whatever language. Um, but I just call it a tintinibulum, um, cause it's mint to make noise, these small little solid silver things uh, bang against this hollow silver sphere and make this na nice noise. I think the noise is supposed to be apotropaic and like protect you from demons and bad things that happen. Um, and Lord knows we all need that. <laughs> um, and then this, um, this is another Indian charm. It's a uh, picture of a lion. I'm a Leo, which explains the peridot, but um, I just love this. And it's like I wear it, as I said, almost every day. So I hope that one day I learn how to really act like a lion. Um, it's not a real coin because there's no reverse um, and there's nothing on the reverse. Um, so it, it was sold to me as vintage. I don't really care the age because I just saw the lion and I was in love with it. Um, but yeah, here are all of these silver things. You know, I, I love silver so much. I can't wait to make more videos about silver. Um, if you can tell, my voice is a little shaky because I'm just excited, uh, like thinking about making videos about silver and talking to other people who like silver and <laughs> yeah, I'm like giddy. Um, but thank you so much if you've made it all 14 minutes, probably 15 by the time I stop rambling. But thank you so much if you had made it this far. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, anyways, I will see you again. Once again, my name's Hyacinth. Bye.